Forgot to film an intro. Okay. Hello, Bofiles. Today, I'm going to be scraping a reed. So this is scraping a reed from a blank. If you need help tying a blank, that's a different video, which I'll link to in the description. I just want to do a little update because I already have a couple videos where I'm showing how I scrape a reed, but a lot has changed in my reed making since then. So I just kind of wanted to show how to make a quick and easy reed um, from a blank. And this is a kind of reed that you can play if you need to get through rehearsal, you need to practice just simple vibration up to pitch, that kind of thing. And this is actually it when we're done. You can check out lots of other free resources at herbalfiles.com and sign up for the monthly newsletter. Uh, to be fair, I usually send out stuff on holidays also, so it's a little bit more than monthly, but it's still a good time. You can get read discounts and see what's going on in the oboe world, and it'd be great to see you there. Let's make a read. So we're going to be making a reed. Again, this is a little update on reed making. And um, we're trying a little different angle here. So first thing I do, which is the first thing I've always done, I guess, is take the ears off my blank. And hopefully we've got a blank <laughs> that's well tied and not leaking at this stage. But that's beyond the scope of this video. We are strictly scraping. Um, so at this stage, I do like to take it off the mandrel. Some people like to keep it on the mandrel, um, but I always make mine off. Oop, there we go. Okay, pretty snug on there. Okay, so now first thing, again, <laughs> there's a lot of first things, I guess. I suppose the next thing is I'm going to make the slope. So hopefully this bird's eye view works for you guys. I'll be turning to the side um, periodically just so you can see what's going on. And yeah, so I'm just going to get some nice curls. And just clearing out the tip here, getting a nice slope to the end of the reed. So I picked this up. This is beyond like what I learned in my undergrad. I picked this up at a festival. Um, just trying to make sure the tip is always the thinnest part. Uh, and getting that slope so that the reed just has it built in from the beginning. I notice there's curls coming off uh, the knife as I go all the way to the end of the reed. So what I mean by curl is, you can see right here, um, the cane, it's curly. <laughs> it comes off like a scroll, like an elder scroll or like a, something else from the medieval area as far as paper goes. Um, it's really hard to <laughs> isolate. There's so little, but the, they kind of curl up on themselves. So you know those nice little curls. And I want to stay out of the middle, of course, going toward the edges. And I'm not coming very far down because I'm about to take all that bark off in one false sweep. But you can already see I'm outlining where the tip will be. I'm going to measure and put some marks on this one just so you guys can see as I'm scraping. So we're measuring here um, so we can see the sectionals. And I'm kind of just eyeballing it. I'm not used to measuring it, so this might be eliminating for me as well. But I like to start the tip at 66, so I want to make sure the slope starts at least that far back. So I didn't really get far enough back on that eyeball shot. And then I'm going to start the back at 61, um, but this pencil line is definitely going to get erased at some point. Let's try that again here. So I can back a little bit further. So I'm also learning <laughs> as I'm teaching. Um, you know, you do a lot of these really quick and you start to just kind of eyeball. When you go slow, you can really get some precision. So I'm just going to bring that back just a little bit. And I want to go past that 66 line, just getting the bark off and creating the slope out towards the tip. If you create a dig like I just did, just finesse and get that curl to come through. If you are getting a lot of digs, it could be an indication that your knife needs to be sharpened. Or at the very least, that the angle of that knife is not working for you at the moment. So it needs to be revisited. Okay, I'm just going to come back that line, taking the bark off a little bit. And already we're getting a little bit more definition in that slope out to the tip. So 
What I mean by that is we're starting fat out here and we're getting skinny up here. Okay, I'm just gonna do the same thing on the reverse side. Again, just getting those curls. And I think the previous video, I was trying to make like a speed read, something I would make if I was just, you know, cranking them out. Definitely my remaking has gotten a lot slower actually. Um, so I try to take a little bit more care. But it's always useful to be able to crank out a 15 minute read if needed. Or <laughs> some people, you know, they want to do a five minute read, uh, which is also fine if you need to just really crank them out. But I tend to not favor that style these days as I've kind of adopted some different techniques to help with consistency. Okay, so um, here's from the profile. And uh, let me put like something dark in the background, maybe my little leather pouch here. So you can see the slope out to the tip. Okay, all right, so now the next step is gonna be to get a lot of this bark off of the reed. And my game plan is to just go straight up and down. I usually do maybe about like five to 10 scrapes in this direction. And I'm mostly just trying to accomplish some sense of symmetry. So the danger at this step is that you'll over scrape the heart. We wanna make sure the heart is very healthy um, when we clip it open. But still going for that sense of symmetry. There's about five on that side. I have to revisit it after I do the other side to get some symmetry, but let's try for that for now. It's a little strange to be checking on the camera as I scrape, um, but hopefully it won't cause any issues. Just kind of evening that out for symmetry. And this looks a little bit too far up, but we're gonna leave it for now. Notice there's a good spine there. So we may get rid of the bark there in just a moment, but I'm gonna do the same thing on this side first, okay? So just straight up and down. Getting really close to the middle, but not putting my knife in the middle. Going still all the way out to the tip of the reed. Okay. And then same thing on the other side. And lately I've been leaving a little bit too much in the heart and kind of dealing with it later. Um, I used to have an issue to overcome where I was seeing a little bit too much, too much out of the heart at this stage. And so that was a challenge that I've maybe swung the other side, um, or swung too far to the other side, if we're thinking of remaking as a pendulum. So, uh, ideally, you would just get it exactly right every single time, but that's really <laughs> um, difficult to do, and some might say even unrealistic. Okay, so if you'll notice, I'm just kind of feeling with my fingers. A little, I could feel there's a little bit of extra bark here on the spine, so I was doing a little bit too much avoiding on the spine, so I'm actually going to get really close to it. And just get the bark off, maybe with one more scrape on each side. And one more there, and that already looks a lot better. And same issue on the side, so just getting really close there. And good. Okay. Hopefully that wasn't too much. Just get the tip a little bit more smoothed out here. And definitely going to reach over my knife because I just took out a piece that I did not want to take out inadvertently. Luckily, it's near the tip, so we'll clip it off anyway. But I do not like things coming off that I didn't mean to. So having a sharp knife is key. OK. OK, so here we are at a step to clip. I'm actually going to do this twice um, so you can get it from two angles. Just can see what the clip looks like. I think the other video when I had <laughs> some help with the filming, my beloved cousin uh, was helping me film, but he is a famous actor now, so he's not really in town. So, okay, so that's one clip, just a little bit from above, and then we'll do 
one more from below, but just so you can hear it, I'm gonna flip the camera to my face now. Okay, so we just clipped it open and uh, I'm just gonna like blow against it. Which is exactly what I'm looking for. So that tells me that the heart is not overly scraped out. Uh, I'm blowing, you know, slowly at first and increasing the speed and it eases into the sound. It's not overly responsive at this stage, which is great. Okay, plenty of cane to scrape out. Okay, and you can already see there's a lot of cane curls forming here on the desk. I wonder if I can zoom in here. Ooh, nice. Um, so you can see <laughs> all of the shavings that are starting to come off. And that's really how much you want to be taking off the tip at this stage. It's quite a bit of cane that needs to come off. So let's continue here. And at this stage, I'll put the plaque... <clears throat> Excuse me. At this stage, I'll put the plaque in. And we're gonna use my little worn out plaque because it has served me so well. Not every plaque <laughs> do, uh, I use this much, but this one has been really good for me. At this stage, I'm just gonna smooth out the tip. So I'm just coming from a little bit further back and just clearing out the tip. And again, just trying to get the curls that I can and scraping out toward the plaque. I'm gonna refocus here. And zoom in a little bit. Let's see if that gives us a better view. So there's a little bit of thickness here at the very end of the tip, so that's what I'm trying to get rid of. Just starting a little further back and scraping out towards the corners of the tip, staying out of the middle, of course. The angle of the knife is super important, but when I was younger, I definitely overdid it. So just having a sense of balance and temperance as you integrate these ideas about reed making is important. You know, the most important thing is that it works and not some good boy philosophical ideal. And again, I just want to reemphasize the most important thing is the sharpness of your knife. So if you are coming out reed making with a sharp knife, odds are it's going to work out for you. <laughs> and if not, odds are that's going to be very frustrating for a long time. I felt like it was years before I even had a sharp knife uh, to make a reed with. And having a sharp knife definitely ended a lot of the frustrations. So maybe at this stage, if you're watching <laughs> or making reads with us, you can let us know in the comments what knife you're using and what tools you use to sharpen it. Um, be curious to know what you guys are using around the world. And I'm sure if you are watching this video, you are enough into oboe and reed making to be curious as well. I really think it's important to have that sense of community in reed making. Uh, especially now that I'm teaching reed making quite a bit. So here's that chunk I took off when it was not clipped open yet um, that made me sharpen my knife. So we're just going to smooth that out, and then hopefully I'll just clip past it um, once we keep making the reed. But that is unfortunate that the top of this reed won't have a nice close for now anyway. I'm just scraping to the up the rails to the middle. Oh, sorry, to the sides, not the middle. Staying away from the middle, in fact. Okay. All right, so at this stage, I just want to point out a couple things. A um, lot of bark still in certain places. Uh, but the tip is very thin. So gotten the tip a lot more responsive out there on the, tip, on the end. Um, and we're going to start bringing it back here in the next step. It's a little bit more script than I intended, um, but we'll see if we can make it work. The other thing that I want to draw your attention to is the reed 
uh, is holding the plaque very tightly. So the sides stay um, fairly tight uh, when I clip it open. Uh, every piece of cane is going to be a little bit different. The straighter the cane, the better this is going to be. You can see a little bit of daylight, but hopefully with soaking and making more of the reed, that becomes a tighter seal. Okay, so let's try it at this point. And so here's the crow now that we scraped the tip. So it vibrates a lot like crazy. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is going to need a clip right away. I'm not even going to think about trying the oboe yet because it's just, it's way too unfinished. Um, <laughs> it'll probably sound okay, like it'll work, uh, but it's not worth, you know, going on the function. So let's work on it with just the crow still and uh, let's give it a clip. So at this stage, at the beginning especially, I'll clip pretty big um, bits off the tip. I'm trying to get it to a good length as soon as possible. And this blade maybe needs to be replaced. That's okay. So just to hear the crow again. Okay, a lot more manageable. I think we can make that work. Okay, so at this stage I want to remeasure so you can see what I'm thinking as far as like tip versus heart. Okay, and heart. Okay. All right, so I think we've done a pretty good job respecting these boundaries so far. The tip is pretty thin on what I call the back blade. Um, so I'm gonna watch that and not over scrape it as I continue. All right, so this stage is more or less, you know, <laughs> putting the tip in place. So I'm gonna use this trick I learned a couple summers ago from a colleague who is a great player and reed maker. And so he, he showed me how to like kind of move the plaque over so you can ride the side of the plaque and hopefully not rip anything off the tip in this stage. So. And I just got caught, which scared me, but we made it through. So finesse is super important. You know, don't brute force anything here. Try to just be graceful, like a swan. And land in the right places. So now we're getting the rail of the tip really thin. And some people do this technique for the whole tip. I have not yet discovered how to do that. So I do kind of swing out after I get the rail nice and thin to get the rest of the tip thinner. But maybe one day, I'll figure that out. And if you haven't figured out and you notice me doing something really crazy <laughs> and easily fixed, uh, please tell me in the comments, because uh, I would love to improve my remaking. So I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side, here on the front blade. And when I say the front blade, I mean, that's the blade that's going to be on my bottom lip. And the back blade, I say it's the blade that's going to be on my top lip, just because that's how it faces you when the keys are facing away from you on the oboe. I'm really curious to hear this read. This is a different gouge than I usually use. This is my Inolade gouge, or Inolady, if you like to pronounce it that way. I usually use the Ross gouge. Um but I am out of town right now. <laughs> and so the Ross gouge is a bit heavier, so I left it. Okay. So same thing, uh, you want to be symmetrical on all four sides as you scrape. And I'm kind of favoring that side of the camera. I should really reposition here to get a little bit more friendly framing. Um, okay. Hope that's a little easier to see. I'm just trying to ride the rail of the plaque up the rail of the reed. And this plaque is a little bit worn, so at this angle it's harder to see. But I'm really trying to just scrape the rail. And then have the tip be, you know, not easily divided uh, 
visually so that you can see a more or less smooth transition through the different sections of the tip. I keep wanting to do that. Oh, I'm running out of battery here. Okay, so maybe that's easier. Oh yeah, that's much better. I'm just trying to stay out of the middle. Okay. Same thing on the other side. Okay, so at this stage, um, I am going to try it again just so you can hear it. All right, so we're getting a lower and lower crow. I'm going to clip it one more time and then put it in the back. Okay, so here we go. Give me another clippy clip. Not as big a clip this time, but still sizable. Okay, maybe one more clip, so feeling a little low. And I've historically been pretty clip phobic. So I'm trying not to be so afraid of clipping. There we go. Okay, so we got it clipped again. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep you, you know, up to date on how this individual read is going, and I'm gonna crow it again. All right, so that's a lot more up to pitch to me. And it still eases in with the air, so I'm, I'm liking that. Let's move on to the next step. I'm going to put in the channels into the back. So at all stages of reed making, it's really important that you have a sharp knife. Um, sometimes I feel like when people scrape on the back, or when I see students scrape on the back, they are okay doing it with a not-so-sharp knife. So I just want to remind <laughs> my students, if you're watching, to sharpen your knives! before you do something you can't tape back. So I'm coming back a little bit further than the initial scrape, um, but I definitely want to create a curvature in the back, kind of sloping down from the cork side of the back, but then curving back up into the heart. So just long, but then like shorter scrapes to finesse it out. Staying out of the spine for sure. Okay, so you can see that the spine is still there, I hope. I don't know if you can see that. Let me try to zoom in here. So maybe as I turn it, you can maybe see that there's some thickness there. And Okay. Okay, so that feels more like a read to me. At this stage, I might try it in the elbow. So, uh, you know, the read's working. I, I might put it away here. For, for this video, I'm gonna continue working on a little bit so we can hear it. 
Um, but this might be where I stop the first day and revisit it the next day. It's still pretty loose and flat, so I don't want it <laughs> to go to bed like this necessarily, but sometimes drying out really helps it or just having a practice session on it. But functionally, I mean, it works in all the registers and if you need like a read for something and you can manufacture it for just a rehearsal or something. Um, this will do the trick. And so I hope that helps. Um, we'll keep working on it a little bit. I'm, I think we're gonna end it there, yeah. Um, but that's just a rough scrape on the read. You know, rough scrape, clip open, tip, back, functioning read is the idea. Now I'm gonna finish this read for myself before I play it in public. But if you need a quick read, I hope this video helps you. Uh, when in doubt, of course, play beautifully.